Example number one. Example number one. Find the derivative of y is equal to sine of 5x. This is what I'm telling you now. Our u, uh, by the way, u there is actually the uh, the measure of the angle. And the measure of the angle. It is not a constant. It is the measure of our reference angle using the sine function. Okay. Now to do that, do that. I find here. Uh, first, first we let we let u be equal to five x. Okay, the measure of the angle. We let u be the measure of the angle. So that the derivative of u, of course, what is the derivative of five x? Response. This derivative of five x. Mm. Anyone? Five, sir. Five. Very good. Babawin ko yung scores ko na binigay sa inyo. Most of you got 30 and above. Mm. Should I be happy? Or should I... Uh, tawag doon. Wala. Anyway, sige, five. Derivative of 5x is 5. And using these values, we have now y is equal to sine u. Okay? Sine u. And derivative of sine u again. Derivative of sine u is y prime is equal to cosine, cosine, cosine u. U, right? Which is also equivalent to cosine. Our u again is 5x. And our du, we have to multiply that. 5 here is a constant multiple. We cannot multiply this to the given again. Right? That is not 5x times 5. This is cosine 5x times 5. It's equivalent to 5 cosine. Here is the derivative of sine to five x. Question. So far, okay, no man. I no question. Let's proceed. Uh, in our example, actually, it is not. Or a sine five x now. I think that is sine four x. Medium mobility now. Right, in our example, I use five x here, but in our given module, it should be four. Now let's just change five five four. You may always refer to this example if you are having confusion in finding the derivative of the function. First, let u or let, let the angle be a variable u. Then differentiate the u. And use u in place of the angle. We have sine u here. Set up sine four x, then derivative of sine u is cos sine u du. Later on, we'll be returning these values in our given functions. From u, we use four x, and du here, du here is actually the four. Four. That's why we have cos and four x times four. And again, this is not 4x times 4. This is cosine 4x times 4. You cannot multiply the angle, the reference angle, 
multiply our multiple by constant. So our final answer would be 4 cos x. Anyway, we still have more examples. But I think other examples would be be using this form. We'll be using this form. We'll just try to solve the given problem using a definition stated above or stated a while ago. So example number two. Example number two. Showing you the solutions. Now let's just try to solve this on our own. Find y prime if y is equal to tan j cube prime x. Find y prime if tan if y is equal to tan j cube. Mm. This can know this can be written as quantity quantity tangent five x okay. and its square five x is the same as tangent five x quantity cube. A tangent cube five x is the same. As the quantity tangent 5x cube. So by this form, we can easily identify which rule we should be using in finding the derivative. Okay, so basically we'll be using the COA chain rule of differentiation. Chain rule. Let's do that. By chain rule, we have the derivative of y with respect to x is equivalent to by chain rule, huh? Chain by chain rule, we have to multiply term by the exponent. Three. We have to take there. Take there. Then let's copy the given x. And we'll be subtracting. One from the exponent. So three becomes two. The three minus one is two. Then we'll, we'll multiply this by derivative of, of our base here. Tangent five x. Derivative of tangent is secant square. Okay, five x. Same, same pa rin. If you differentiate a specific function, whatever the angle there will, you, you have just to have, just copy the angle, not copy the angle. If that is tangent 5x, then it's derivative is secant squared 5x. Then you have to multiply, of course, derivative of the angle. Derivative of the angle. Okay. It's secant u du. Second u, and this is the du derivative of 5x. And simplifying this, simplifying this, we have now 15 square 5x. This is now the derivative of tangent cube five x. Any question? Same lang sila ha. Tangent fifteen square a uh, tangent square five x. Yes, you can square five. Find the chain. If no question, let's proceed to number three. Proceed to number three. So given 
Find derivative of y with respect to x if y is equal to 3 sine 6x plus tangent x squared. So the rules that we have to use are the constant multiple rule, the sum and difference rule, and the power rule. Okay. We have the basic rules of the differentiation. What time? We have a constant multiple 3 here. And multiple 3 here. So let's just deal with 3 liter after we simplify the derivatives of those functions. Derivative of sine, derivative of sine is cosine. Copy the angle. Then times the derivative of the angle. Okay. Plus. Plus. Derivative of tangent is secant square x squared. Copy and then multiply this by the derivative of the angle is 2x. And this came from the derivative of x squared. Huh? This 2x came from the derivative of x squared here. We have now our final answer. Final answer will be um, we have 18 cosine 6x plus 2x square x. Question? Second word po talaga siya, no, sir. Yes, Jason? Second word po talaga siya, no, sir. Yes, you can speak. That is based on our definition. Very big. Yes, this is second square. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, po. Sir, saan po galing si 2x, sir? 2x is actually the du. The event. 2x there is the du. I remember that we let u be the angle and then differentiate the angle. We can add this in number 3. Huh? Okay. If our angle here is x is squared, our u here is x is squared, the derivative of x is squared is du. And then, derivative of x squared, the derivative of u is du. Let's have another example. Let's see, let's verify if our solution is the same as in our module, yes. 18 cos and 6x plus 2x second squared x. Example number four. Example number four. This time, our angle is being defined by a polynomial with two terms. Okay. A binomial to be specific. We have 2 sine 2x cubed minus 5. 2 sine 2x cubed minus 5. Now, y of f times x. y of x. First, let's set aside our multiple 2. Our constant multiple 2. We have the bracket here. This is where we place a derivative of sine. Derivative of sine is again cosine. Okay. Then copy the measures. There you go. We 
x minus 5. Then we'll multiply this by the derivative of that angel. Okay, what is the derivative of 2x cubed minus 5? Anyone? Six x squared by ten. Yes, six x squared by power rule. Okay, by power rule, and then uh, derivative of a constant. Okay, derivative of negative five is zero. And yeah, we'll simplify this. Simplifying this, we we'll have uh, we have. Uh, multiples here now we have 2 and 6x squared there this would have become 12x squared cosine 2x and then that's it 12x squared cosine 2x cubed minus 5 and we have the same. We have the same solution. So far, let's proceed. Example number five. Four cosine sine x squared. Okay. I told you a while ago that the angle measurement could be defined by any algebraic function or transcendental function. So the, the measure of the angle could be defined as another transcendental as well. Here is your or here is our angle measurement sine x squared sine x squared. So what is 4 cos sine sine x squared? 4 cos sine sine x squared. Okay. Stay new. Let's solve this on our own. On our own. This. Okay. Yeah, derivative or f prime. Is equivalent to let's set aside the, the constant multiple four, then we'll deal with derivative of cosine. Derivative of cosine. What is derivative of cosine? That is negative sine. Okay, this in our definition. Derivative of cosine is negative sine here. I then just copy, copy our angle measurement and then differentiate that angle. So let's just copy the sign. Sign, 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 x squared. Multiply, and then we'll multiply this by the derivative of the angle. Our angle is sine x squared. Sine x squared, so cosine x squared multiply by du. Our du here is x derivative of x squared. Like this, by x. Now simplify this. We have multiple four outside. We have negative here, so negative four. And then we have two x there. So all in all, that is negative eight x. Eight x. Sine. Sine. Sine sine x squared or sine x squared. That's it. Negative 
8x sine sine x squared cosine x squared. So if you notice, no, our solutions from example 1 to 5, more or less, two lines lang yung solutions natin. Just apply the differentiation rule and then simplify the answer. Ay, ganun kadali. Ganun kadali ang differentiation. Verify. Let's verify this. This is the same as uh, what is stated in our program. That's a module. Okay. X sine sine x squared plus sine x squared. Just look. Okay. Moving on. We have. I think I need help. Before that, let me ask you to take a screenshot of this definition. Screenshot to. So if ever I have question with it regards to this differentiation, then you have your copy. Okay, na? You have your copy, ha? Huh? Then you have the copy of your of the derivatives of the six trigonometric functions. Let's try to solve example number six. First question. What rule or differentiation rule we should be using in order to find derivative of such function? Cosine 2x cotangent x cubed. What rule or which rule Product rule, sir. Yes, product rule. I product rule. So we just let, but if you're still confused about product rule, we let u be cosine to x and p be cotangent x to the following the rule. That is U D V plus V D U. Okay. U D V plus V D U. So by definition of the rule we first we have to copy the first factor. Copy the first factor and multiply this by the derivative of the second factor. What is derivative of cotangent? Hello, what is the derivative of cotangent? Negative cosecant squared, sir. Cosecant. Squared and then copy the angle. Then multiply this. I oh, don't know. This is u dv already. This is u dv. Uh, or I forgot pala. Before I forgot, we should multiply this by the derivative of x cubed na pala. Okay. So the u. This is the derivative of x cubed is 3 x Plus there. Copy the second factor. Oh, then multiply that by the derivative of the first factor. What's the derivative of cosine? Derivative of cosine is negative sine four. Sine. And copy the angle. And multiply this by the derivative of that angle. Derivative of 2x is 2. 
And that's it. Now your U D V plus V D U. So simplify. Well, into our first term, simplify the first term. Our first term, huh? this is the first term. We have negative there, then we have a multiple there. 3x squared. So this is now negative 3x. Then just copy the functions. We have our secret. For consistency, let, let me close this. Then simplify our second term. This is our second term. We have negative there, and then we have a multiple two there. And uh, we'll be arranging our functions now. So let's start with uh, the basic functions, the three basic functions I assignment in order, and then followed by the other inverses. So you can see. X. Two sine two x. And this is the derivative of cosine two x cotangent x. Verify. Let's verify this. The x squared cosine two x. Yes, it is true. You see. See. Done with an example of functions involving our derivative of trigonometric functions involving the basic rules, uh, the chain rule, and the product rule. Here is an example of derivative of a function which involves quotient rule. Quotient rule. Number eight. Again, if you are having confusion with the derivative of the derivative of function applying the quotient rule, we have here u d. Uh, we have U V U V there. We have white prime equal to V V U minus U V V over V squared. So that first copy the denominator. Called tangent square. Tangent square x. Then multiply this by 
derivative of cosecant x to the fourth. What is derivative of cosecant? I use our uh, no, definitions. What is derivative of cosecant? Cosecant u. Hello, I ask you to take a screenshot. Huh? Neg negative cosecant u, u cotangent u, u du. You? Negative cosecant u cotangent u. And then our du is actually the derivative of x to the fourth, which is 4x. This is the VDU. This is the VDU here. Then we'll subtract this by UDV. UDV. Let me close this. That with parenthesis. Copy the operator. Multiply this by the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of the denominator is chain rule. Okay. You have to apply the chain rule. Call tangent square x is can be expressed as Tangent x. Okay. Cotangent square x is the same as cotangent x. So by chain rule, chain rule will be multiplying the exponent, the term, and then later on this will be deducted, deducted by one. That's two. Cotangent. X. I say two minus one is one. So we have an imaginary raised to one here, right? Imaginary raised to one. And then derivative of cotangent. Derivative of cotangent. I am not by chain rule. By chain rule. After we apply the power rule, we have to multiply that derivative by the derivative of the cotangent. The base function. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cos square. square x and then the derivative of x is just one it's one lang yan we can just omit that times one there since this is our multiplicative identity any value multiplied by one is the same value and we have to square our denominator square the denominator Cotangent square x squared is actually cotangent fourth x. Then simplify. Simplify. This is our first term. First term. We have negative there. And we have 
Okay, let it clear. Then we have what's this? 4x cubed there. We have negative 4x. Tangent, cotangent, where x cosecant, cosecant, four. We have 4x cubed here and a negative. Okay, and negative. Okay, that's why we have negative 4x cubed. And copy the functions. We have cotangent square x. We have cosecant x to the fourth. And we have cotangent x to the fourth. Good. In our first term, second term, negative and negative, negative and negative, it's positive. Positive, and our multiples are we have two here. Oh, tangent x, tangent x. Anyway, since this is multiplication, you can interchange the order of your terms or I mean of your factors. Since five times four is the same as four times five. Now we are commutative under multiplication. X and we have cotangent and then is this the final answer? Is this the final answer? I think not. See, both of our numerators, uh, both of the terms of our numerators contains contain cotangent x. Cotangent x. Okay. Uh, wait now. Okay. So I was saying both of our terms in the denominator 
have cotangent x. So we can factor out one of the cotangent x. Na? Or we'll divide both terms by cotangent to the fourth x. So basically our final answer would be this. This is this becomes cotangent x along huh? cotangent x. Now we have so we deleting one of our cotan our cotangent x here, and then this will be two. And then this, this is the final. 4x cubed, cotangent x, plus secant x to the fourth, cotangent x to the fourth, plus secant x to the fourth, cotangent x, x over, all over cotangent cubed x. Okay, in our given module, Fail to simplify the final answer. Yes, simplify it. Simplify it. Four x cubed the same. Ten x plus two x. Four plus two x. Four plus two x. Three x. Two second x. Four over ten cubed x. Same. Same. Question, please, I want you to ask question that I would know which part I should be, uh, I should be clarifying, clarifying with you. Question, guys. No question. Oh, 21 na lang tayo. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ano po yung dun sa second part po? Ano second lang po siya, no? Siya uh, lang po nung yung cotangent squared x tsaka po cotangent x, sir. Yeah. We factored out cotangent x. We factored out natin yung isang cotangent x outside. And then cotangent x over cotangent to the fourth x. So by loss of exponent, na, so what's it called? On, we need to. In return, mawawalan ng isang cotangent x yung lawang terms natin. That's why we have here cotangent x na lang from cotangent square x, and second term natin has no more cotangent x. Okay. Any other question? Thank you, Bob. Any other question? Nothing. We can proceed to our next example. Example number nine. Example number nine. Yan. So we have the given f of x is equal to square root of secant x squared minus five. Square root of secant x squared minus five. So take note, you can express this exponentially. The square root of secant x squared minus 5 can also be written as secant x squared minus 5 raised to just 1. So we'll be applying the chain rule. This might 
uh, look complicated to you, but it's not. All you have to do is to apply the rule, and then that's it. Matter of uh, two lines solution or two line solution. Dalawa lang line yung kailangan natin dito. We have the application of the chain rule, and then second line is the simplify. Okay. Na. So that. We have f prime x x and then by chain rule we'll be multiplying our term by the exponent okay, by the exponent here and then copy copy the secant where x Then after that, we'll be subtracting 1 from 1 half, right? So basically, that is 1 half minus 1. And 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. And furthermore, after we apply the power rule, we'll be differentiating our base function here. And secant x squared minus 5. What is the derivative of secant? The derivative of secant. So you have your copy with you, right? What is the derivative of secant? Second u tangent u du. Secant u. Our u here is x squared huh? so x squared minus 5. Secant u tangent u. And then our du, again, is the derivative of x squared minus 5, which is 2. And then that's it. We just applied the power, uh, the power rule and then the chain rule. And I'll simplify this. Simplify. Mm, this is multiplication. Multiplication by loss of Sir, exponent. 2x. 2x is the derivative of x squared minus 5. Oh, I said, uh, derivative of x squared minus 5. As I was saying, uh, by loss of exponent, kasi, let's say for example, x, what is x? times x na? What is x times x? x squared. x squared. Okay. Very good. So basically, we'll just add we'll just add the exponents of the two variables. Same variables, the different exponents. Okay. What x raised to 1 times x raised to 1 because that is x raised to 1 plus 1. Now, what if this is negative one half, and then this is one. What will happen? So this would have become negative one half, negative one half minus uh, plus one, right? I by loss of exponent. If we are mul to multiply same variable with different exponents, all we have to do is to add their exponents. So basically x raised to negative 1 half times x is x raised to negative 1 half plus 1 or simply or simply x raised to 1 half. Right? x raised to 1 half. Is this clear to you? Hello, any response? Is this clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes. So observe this. We have secant x squared minus 5 raised to negative 1 half times secant x squared minus 5. If we let secant x squared minus 5 as x, so basically we have we just have here x raised to negative 1 half times x raised to 1. Okay. So now here, this, is not, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. 
This is basically x raised to negative 1 half times x. Okay. So this is just x raised to 1 half or 4 or Let's apply that ha. Uh, but before that, one half muna. Let's simplify one half. One half there. Wait. My laptop is. Okay. One half here times our constant multiple there, 2x. Okay, 1 half times 2x is 2x over 2. 2x over 2 is simply x. Okay. This is simply x. Okay. Then this is, this is what I'm trying to explain a while ago. If this is x raised to negative 1 times x, we just have x raised to 1 half. Or x raised to one half is square root of x. Okay, let me copy this. We have x square root of secant x squared minus five. This again came from here. Okay. Square root of secant x squared minus five came from this expression. And we have tangent x squared minus 5. Now, you could write that outside the tangent. Okay, outside the tangent. Pero, to have a more... Uh, more understandable solution. We can just write tangent here. So this is now our final answer. X tangent X squared minus 5 square root of secant X squared minus 5. Any question? Yes, Jason. Uh, explain po ulit yung bun dun sa may ano sir. Second na may negative one at pati po dun sa second na wala sir. Uh, okay, if you are having confusion with that, we have another way no? Sige na lang. Let me show you the other way. Show you the other way. So one half here times... 1 half times 2x there is x, right? Is x. And then, this is 1 half. This is negative 1 half. We can just go over with the definitions or the loss of radicals and loss of exponent. So, secant x squared minus 5 quantity negative 1 half is secant square, uh, square root of secant x squared minus 5. Pero nasa baba. Kasi negative. It is because the exponent is negative. And the exponent is fraction. Okay? Then we have here, we have here, secant, secant, Five and then x. Okay. Any question about this line? Any question of, about this line? Kuha naman ito. 
Okay. Ay, pa siya, no? And then, again, it is, uh, it is, in mathematics kasi, di ba, we are trying to make our solution as rational as possible. Okay, as rational as possible. But, in this case, we have a radical expression in our denominator. Okay, a, a radical expression in our denominator. So, we still have to rationalize this. We still have to rationalize this. So, what should we be doing is we have to multiply Earth of secant x squared minus 5 to the numerator as well as the denominator so that we can cancel out the radical sign okay, in our denominator. Doing that, we have now we have now we have now x secant x secant x secant x squared 5 tangent x squared 5 and then we have the secant Kasi naka-multiply ko eh. Walang long cut na ito. Compared to the solution natin. And in return, this will be secant x squared. Okay. I cancel out na yung radical sign. Kasi by loss of radical, Extracting the n root of a radicand with the same n, exponent n, will just have to cancel the radical sign. And if you can observe, we have a common factor. Our numerator contains secant x squared minus 5 over secant x squared minus 5. So we can cancel this out. Canceling this out, we have now x tangent x squared minus 5 times square root of secant x squared minus 5, which is the same as uh, what I explained you all. Although this is very, it, it's the uh, long cut, parang ano, long cut ng solution. Question? Pero eh, sinasabi ko nga kanina, para mas mabilis, gamitan lang natin na uh, uh, ang tawag doon uh, loss of exponent just let secant x squared minus 5 as any variable as any variable let's say a like a if that is a then we have now here a we have here a is to the one half times a okay this a diba? we let this as a a so negative one half times a this is another a and by loss of exponent, by loss of exponent, we have here a raised to maybe one half. Alam, kapag multiplication na, if we are to multiply two variables, uh, same variables, we will have to add to their exponents. So a now is raised to okay, or a is uh, a raised to one half is square root of a. A is secant x squared minus 5. 
Okay, sir. Okay. Please take a screenshot of this, or it is it is not included in our solution. Very lang kayo if ever you encounter problems with the same event. And last example, same as the other expressions, or ex other functions, we can also evaluate trigonometric functions at a specific value of x, at a specific value of x. Like for example, uh, I believe our example here, Uh, eto, hindi din siya naka-simplify. Napaka-simplify na lang sa module natin. It does not, uh, it did not cancel second x squared minus 5. So later, yeah, you can use it. Uh, example number 10, last example. Given f of x is equal to 1 minus 2 tangent x, over 3 plus 2 cosine x, find f prime of 0. f prime of 0. f prime of 0. So, it, since our given is a rational function, rational function, then we will be applying, we are to apply or to apply the quotient rule. The quotient rule. And then after apply the rules of differentiation, that derivative will be evaluated when x is equal to zero. X is equal to zero. In that, solution. We have now f prime. f prime of x more than a half. I suggest to find first the derivative before evaluating uh, the result when x is equal to 0. Okay. f prime of x more than f prime of x by quotient rule. Copy the denominator. Copy the denominator and differentiate the numerator. And square x. Okay. Ah, this should be negative. This should be negative. Let's say we have here negative tangent. Ah, negative tangent x. Derivative of tangent is secant square. And we have x lang done. Derivative of x is 1. So any value multiplied by 1 is the same value. There's no need to show that we have to multiply by 1. And minus of e the numerator. Copy the numerator. And then multiply this by the der derivative of the denominator. Derivative of the denominator. Okay. These are the constant pala, no? By derivative of constant rule, we have here 0. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of 2, 3 is 0. So we'll deal with uh, these terms. Derivative of cosine is negative. Okay. Then we have 2 there. Okay. The multiple of 2. Our multiple of 2 here. Since we have negative 2 sine, right? Negative 2 sine x, and then times 1, okay? Times 1, and then we have 2. x there, and then this is there, the denominator. And from here, from here, uh, you could simplify. You could simplify this, pero 
will be having solution uh, longer solution actually you can simplify this but you can have a longer solution try that you can just evaluate this right away when x is equal to zero We have here cosine zero, we have secant square zero, we have tangent zero here, we have sine zero there. Ah, sorry. Zero. Okay. And you may want to bring out your calculator. Because we have to deal with the cosine, the secant, the tangent. So first, we have 3 plus 2 times. Right, 3 plus 2. And then the value of cosine here, we have to deal with the value of cosine 0. On your calculator, just look for this cosine function. For cosine here, and this is cosine. It's cosine zero, and cosine zero is one. Cosine zero is one. Okay. Multiply this by negative two times. What is secant square zero? Secant square zero. We don't have any secant value here or secant function here. But we know that secant is the inverse of sine. And secant is the inverse of sine. Iba dun sa katawa kanina? Sa katawa? The inverse of sine is secant. Ah, wait. No. Mali, mali, mali. Inverse of sine is cosecant. So, inverse of cosine is actually secant. Uh, let me correct. Let me correct. That inverse of secant is cosine. Vice versa, inverse of cosine is secant. So, this is just secant zero squared. No, secant. 0 squared. And secant 0 is 1 over cosine. Inverse. Reciprocal. 1 over cosine. So 1 over cosine 0 is. Again, we have 1. 1 squared is 1. Okay. Secant squared 0 is 1. Secant squared 0 is 1. We have minus there. One, and two. What is tangent zero? Tangent zero. That is tangent zero is zero. Tangent zero is zero. So we have here negative two. Sine zero. Sine zero. Sign there is another zero. Another zero. And then last we have three plus two. Cosine zero is one, right? Then we have to square this. That. Now three plus two is five times negative two is negative ten. And this is now zero. Let's say we have a multiple zeros there. Any value times zero is zero. We have now 25. Okay. This is 3 plus 2 times 1 is 5 squared is 20. Lowest term is negative 2. This is now our. So f prime of zero is negative. F prime of zero is 